All right, we need to shake things up here. There's a dude over on TikTok who is blowing up because he's using a D20 to determine what goes into his sandwich at lunch. He's got like a million followers. We're working our butts off over here trying to make helpful videos, but we've got like 2% of his subscribers. So I don't know. Throw me some ideas down in the comments. Let's add a little D20 fun to these videos too. I'll do a sandwich, I'll do a smoothie. We can use some D20 rolls to determine what I talk about at the beginning of a video. We can use one to come up with some new encounters or monsters or something. Throw your ideas down below and we will just have some fun over the next few weeks. See if we can start to approach 3% of that guy's subscribers. But today I wanted to talk about terrain because I have tried some things in my little D&D career here. I have spent hours drawing up maps on sheets of graph paper and I saved those maps because I spent so much time on them and I know I will never use them again. I have dragged my TV into my game room and plopped it down on the table to load up an animated airship map for a pretty fun little battle. I've gone to the hobby store and I've bought up all those little trees that they use in dioramas and in model train displays just to add some greenery to my grid paper maps. Luckily these days there's a lot of options out there at pretty low price points if you do want to have some cool maps. If you're wanting nice 3D terrain though, one of the most cost efficient ways to do that is through dungeons and lasers. It's relatively inexpensive because it comes unpainted on sprues, so there is some work you need to do to get a table ready, but it's not really that bad. So today we're gonna take a look at two sets in particular. We have, yeah, the Dwarven Mines and Abomination Vaults. And many thanks to Arcane Studios and Dungeons and Laters for sending them our way. If you are unfamiliar with Abomination Vaults, it is one of the most popular Pathfinder 2nd Edition adventure paths. It is a straight up dungeon crawl. And it was so popular that they are bringing it to Dungeons and Dragons 5th Edition later this year. So it'll be the first adventure that you can run officially with either 5e or Pathfinder 2e rules, which makes this terrain set even cooler because it's universal. So what I'm curious to see is how closely they actually tied this Abomination Vault's adventure to the terrain set here. Or maybe is it more of a kind of generic terrain set? So we're gonna find out. We're also gonna preview a few other Dungeons and Laser sets today, and I'm gonna let you let me know which ones you're most interested in seeing down the road on the channel here. Oh, and the folks at Dungeons and Lasers have been super generous as well. Oh, they sent me two extra Abomination Vault sets for us to give away. So we're gonna do a little giveaway with this video. Now we are gonna have to limit this one to the United States only because well, one, shipping costs are really, really expensive internationally. And two, there's like laws for international giveaways. So it makes it really hard for us. But to enter, if you're a US resident, all you have to do is be a subscriber to the Gallant Goblin here on YouTube and leave me a comment down below, either giving me a suggestion for using a D20 to make these intros and outros more fun, or two, telling me which of the Dungeons and Laser sets we talk about today is your favorite and why. And this video is actually brought to you by Dungeons & Lasers. They have a new fundraising campaign going on right now for outdoor terrain. Here you can see one little sample of the hills that come with the Elvenwood set. I haven't had time to actually paint it up just yet, but it does give you a good idea of what to expect. This campaign brings you outdoor scattered terrain to make expansive battle maps with elevation and obstacles so that your players will have more opportunities to use tactics and cover. You can choose between several sets, including the Elven Woods with trees and hills and campsites, Swamps of Doom with a rowboat, docks, and swamp flora and fauna, Land of Giants with crumbling ruins and statues, and a creature pack with loads of many, including an epic looking wyvern. The best part of Dungeons and Lasers fundraising projects though is that you get a ton of freebies with stretch goals. With this campaign, you'll get a free Tarask Mini, plus a ton of other stretch goals, including some that they've already unlocked, including a stagecoach, the Tree of Spirits, a Shaman's Tent, a Swamp Hut, some Harpies, a Watchtower, some Thorny Bushes, Giant Ants, a Highlander's Hut, the Gate of the Sun, a Siren, a Cajun, so many more. You don't want to miss out. Check out the Game Found campaign Use the link below the video here, and if you like what you see, kindly let them know that the Gallant Goblin sent you. Now let's get back to the game table. 
Why don't we start with the dwarven mine? Everything arrives on sprues like this, so you'll need a good pair of clippers or scissors to cut them out. Really, clippers are the best. It includes six two by two inch floors, six two by four inch floors, 24 two inch long walls, six four inch long walls, all half height by the way, six functional doors and six doorways, plus six standing torches and 12 wall torches. It also includes 16 double clips to connect the floors together and 39 single clips to connect the walls to the floors. And there are also 16 pegs to fill in any holes in the terrain that you're not using. Putting the pieces together is pretty simple. It does come with a little instruction booklet, which you can see here, which is very handy. Now, I'm actually using Abomination Vault's pieces here, which we'll cover in just a sec, to demonstrate how to slot everything together. I just have a few words of advice. Attach the walls to the floors before you attach those floors to each other. It works out much easier that way. Also, be sure you remove any excess sprue material from the clips before you use them, because you'll want the clips to fit securely inside the floor pieces to make sure everything can lie flat on the table. And yes, the doors do open and close. Here is a little mine setup I threw together using most of the included pieces. I think the set comes with enough pieces to make a pretty decently sized encounter area, whether that's one larger room or some corridors in a smaller room. The walls do have textures on each side, so everything looks good on the table from all angles. And of course, those freestanding torches can be moved around as you like. Now, I didn't have time to get everything painted up for you for this video, so let me show you some images from Dungeons & Lasers about what this set can look like if you really paint it up nicely. One thing to notice is that while the floor pieces all feature a pretty similar texture, depending on how you paint them, they can either be some bits of rock sitting on top of some sand or on top of some standing water. So you can take pieces that have an identical pattern and depending on how you paint them up, they can look radically different. Honestly, these are some really good tutorial pictures too of how to make ripples in sand and water to make it look like it's three-dimensional and how to do some really neat looking lighting effects with those torches using blending and gradients. I'm going to be using these pictures as references when I paint the terrain up for sure. Now let's take a look at the Abomination Vault set. This set comes in sprues like this. All six of the sprues are the same here as well. When you count it up, you get six two by two floors, six two by four floors, 18 two inch walls, six four inch walls, six functional doors and six doorways, three pillars that come in two halves each, six piles of rubble, six wall torches, and six stones that you can use to fill in the unused holes in your floor. It also includes the same number of clips and pegs as the Dwarven Mindset, 16 double clips to connect the floors together, and 39 single clips to connect the walls to the floors, and those 16 pegs. And it also comes with a little instruction manual so you know how to properly put it all together. So yeah, this set doesn't really directly relate to the Abomination Vault's adventure path. It is clearly inspired by the general aesthetic of the dungeon you'll be exploring in that AP, but this set doesn't really directly relate to any specific encounter that you'll find in there. So there's nothing at all keeping you from using this in any adventure you want, as long as a little tentacle motif makes sense. And honestly, this would be a pretty great little mind flayer layer in the Underdark as well. As you can hopefully see, while it does have some very similar parts as the Dwarven Mine, the patterns, the textures, and the designs are all very different. It'll be more apparent when I show you some painted up examples here in a minute. I quite like the little extra bits like the pillars and the piles of rubble and the little wall torches for making the dungeon feel a little bit more lived in. And we'll talk about some other Dungeons & Lasers set here at the end if you really want to liven up your builds. But now let me show you some painted examples of the Abomination Vault set. Again, their artists are really amazing. I definitely recommend referring to these images when you paint your setup so you can get that amazing 3D effect with the stone walls and the floors. You can also see the lighting effects with the different colors here. And they took the light from the torches and spread it across the walls that they'll be attached to. They even took a few pieces and added some blood messages and some splattered pools. The nice thing about unpainted pieces like this is that you can get creative like that. Now, let me show you what the two sets look like combined. Because they use the same basic structure, it's very easy to combine different Dungeons & Laser sets. And as we'll see at the end here, they've come out with a ton of different rooms that you can combine together to make some really thematic dungeons. Combining two sets like this really gives you a lot of real estate to run some encounters. Now, I didn't take the time to pluck up the unused holes in the ground here, but keep in mind that you do have the plugs and the little stones that you can use if you find those holes unsightly. They also have a picture of the two sets put together so you can really see how different they look once you 
finish painting them two different environments, but you can still use them together. Before we take a look at some other Dungeons & Laser sets, let me remind you that this video is also brought to you by Hitpoint Press. The pre-order sale is on now for the Fable Makers animated tarot deck that combines tarot, Dungeons & Dragons, and beautiful animation. If you enjoy doing tarot or are interested in learning, these cards are fantastic. And if you just want some really beautiful cards to add a new layer of fun to your D&D games, these are perfect for that too. The Fable Makers Tarot Guidebook will teach you all about tarot, and it'll tell you how to use these cards in your 5e games. You can enhance some 5e classes with the cards, use them to create NPCs, and much more. There's even a fully developed tarot-themed NPC that you can drop right into your campaign. Pre-order the Tarot Guidebook, deck, or box set today and get a free PDF of the Fable Makers Tarot Deck and Guidebook with your order. And during the pre-order sale, everything is 10 bucks off. Shape your story at AnimatedTarot.com or use a link below the video to let them know we sent you. Now I need your help. Dungeons and Lasers and Archon Studios have sent us quite a few other sets here to show you, and I need you to tell me what you're most interested in seeing me review. A lot of these are available during the current fundraising campaign, and there's some available on their website, so it's a great time to pick up some extra sets. So let me show you what I have, starting with some of the more fantasy rooms, some more fantasy rooms from their last Kickstarter. First, we have the Tudor Mansion, which is a perfect set for noble manors or nice taverns. You have the Royal Castle, which gives you a nice, simple stone castle room. You have Lava Caverns, which are made of clear plastic, so you can do some really creative designs with your paint job. We have the City Streets set here, which I'm quite interested in. It comes with different configurations of streets and sidewalks. And next we have, and this one's heavy, the Sewers Wastes core set. And we did a preview of this one, which you can see in the eye in the corner of your screen up there. All right, and on the other side over here, we have, and look at this, the Townsfolk starter set with 64 minis. If you want to fill up your builds with commoners and guards, this set's gonna help you do that. We also have this very cool looking ghost dragon right here. It's six inches tall and it's on a large size base. And then we have also this set of stretch goals from their last Kickstarter. It says that there is a market stall, a phoenix, a giant, and a troll inside. So we'll take a look at this. And then we also have these little sets of stairs. One is a stone, stone town stairs, and then the other one is the wooden town stairs. And it looks like they contain a set of stairs and landings. There are two sets of stairs and two sets of landings each, I think. And then we have a bunch of Starfinder minis over here. So let me show you what we have here. We have a Lashunta Envoy. We have a Human Solarian. We have a Free Vesk, a Vesk Free Captain, sorry. We have an Asteray, which is one of the aliens I'm not actually familiar with. We have a Vesk Mercenary. We have an epic version of Obaziah, one of the Iconics. We have an Android Mechanic and his Mechanic's drone. We have a Human Soldier. We have a halfling pilot, that's kind of cool. And we have my favorite, the Space Goblin Warband. So you need to let me know down below what you want to see reviews of. These take a little bit of time because I have to cut them out of the sprues, so let me know what you want me to spend my time on. The Starfinder minis are also available at the link below the video. I think most of the other sets here are available as part of the Dungeons & Lasers Encounter game found uh, going on right now. I think it's only got about a week left, so you better check it out. And again, that campaign features a lot of outdoor terrain and game mats. You can add those other sets on as well. It's probably the most cost-effective way of picking up any of this terrain. And the Dwarven Mindset is available right now on their website for 59 bucks and the Abomination Vault set is available too there for 69 bucks. They also have a ton of other fantasy and sci-fi rooms. There's Dragon Minis, or Scatter Terrain. We'll put the store links down below too. And don't forget the Fable Makers Tarot Deck and Guidebook on sale now from Hit Point Press. So yeah, I need a lot of feedback from you guys today, but at least you can win prizes this time. Don't forget to enter the contest. I'll tell you, I know there's a lot of ways to really generate views and engagement with clickbait titles and controversial takes and hot topics. But my goal here is to keep things as happy and positive as I can to help bring people into the hobby, hopefully, and cultivate a great community around minis and mini painting and having fun at the table. I'm so glad you're here. But we do need to grow the channel to make sure I can keep doing this long term. So if you have suggestions for me, let me, let me hear them. I want to hear them down below, even if they involve eating weird sandwiches and drinking weird smoothies or whatever. I just don't want to drink a D20. You can also help me stay on the air by using the links below to check out our sponsors, Dungeons and & Lasers and Hit Point Press 
us today. Click the thumbs up button down there to help other people find us. And of course, you can subscribe to the channel. Come join our Discord server to chat with other awesome folks and come find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Oh, and this Friday, go check out Three Flings over on Twitch as they play Grady's Adventure from Uncaged Goddesses on sale now over at DMs Guild. You can find the show on Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash Angry Nerd Girl. We'll also be hosting the show on twitch.tv slash The Gallant Goblin. For now, though, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I'll see you next time at The Gallant Goblin. Mm -hmm.